Good morning, good afternoon, hello there. I'm here with my dog, Ruby, and we're going to do a chair yoga class today. And the theme of it has to do with delight and joy and kindness. Um, so, uh, but before I get into that, we'll just, uh, I'm just uh, working on a chair yoga class that will be good for people who can't stand um, or people who can stand but are not terrifically mobile and need um, a chair or something to balance with. So I'll have variations as we go along. So I'm going to just sit here in my chair with my feet on the floor. Now, if you are really short, um, I'm quite short actually. I'm five foot three and sometimes chairs are all high for me. You can put your feet on a block or in, on a book or something just to raise them up. And um, uh, you can uh, put your hands on your thighs. Um, you can rest them like this, whatever is comfortable for you. And I'm going to just invite you uh, to uh, be present. And uh, the uh, spine is supposed to be neutral. It's hard to find a neutral step spine. You might wiggle around a little bit and move forward and then move back and then find a place. You could also, if you balance something on your head, you tend to have a neutral spine. So that's another way of finding a neutral spine. But you feel as though you are a puppet and a very kindly puppeteer is drawing your crown chakra up towards the moon or the sun or the sky. All right. So we're going to breathe here. We're just uh, going to be begin with a little bit of pranayama or breathing practice. And um, uh, you want your feet flat on the floor or on a block or something. You might want to move forward if it's more comfortable. Okay, we're inhaling and we're exhaling. We're inhaling and we're exhaling. Inhaling and exhaling, inhaling, and exhaling. And when you're inhaling, I want you to fill up your belly and then your chest and then your upper chest. So we can put our hands on our belly and then on our side ribs and then hook our thumbs under our arms and inhale in the top and then exhale from the top down. So we'll try that again. Belly, side ribs, and then thumbs under the armpits, upper chest, and then exhale from the top down. Here we go again. Inhale one, two, three. And then exhale it all out. Inhale one, two, three. Exhale it all out. And I'll just invite you just to sit and breathe at your own pace for a moment. I'm going to talk about uh, delight and joy. Um, everyday delight, um, how every day can glimmer with joy and be very powerful, how we can lean into those small moments of joy and uh, feel a sense of release. So where does joy live in your body? Can you bring mindful attention to where joy lives in your body? The inner, mo the inner knowing that you are enough. The moments of rest, of stillness and silence that you can experience. Or the feeling of interconnectedness with a community, whether it's one that's your neighborhood, a group of friends, your family, your animal kin, or the natural world, whatever you feel 
your community is. So we're going to be feeling this these moments of joy while we're going through the class, trying to identify where they are in our body and how is it we hold joy. And of course, sometimes we hold joy at the same time we hold sorrow. So joy can be an opening of the heart, being receptive to others. Okay, so here we go. So we're going to begin with our shoulders. We're just going to lift our shoulders up and then we're going to lower them down, up and down. And when we're lifting them up, we're exhaling. And when we're coming down, inhaling and where chest comes up here, up, exhaling, down, inhaling, up, exhaling, good. And now we're going to move our shoulders forward. So we're exhaling forward, we're, we're crouching over and we're inhaling and we can open our arms up with our palms up. And then we're exhaling and we're inhaling. Exhaling and we're inhaling. Exhaling and we're inhaling. Exhaling and we're inhaling. Now, if you can lower your head below your knees, we can do this with uh, lowering our body down. So you lower it down however, however much you can. So I'm coming all the way down, exhaling. And now I'm inhaling, I'm coming all the way up and I'm doing a little bit of a back bend and opening my chest to the sky and inhaling, exhaling, and inhaling. Exhaling and feel that release as you exhale. And as you inhale, inhale delight in this moment. And exhale, and inhale. Exhale, and inhale. Exhale and inhale. And now our shoulders have probably be done in, so we'll roll them back very easily and roll them forward. Good. Now we're just going to work a little bit on our neck. If you have neck problems, you don't have to do this. You can continue to do some shoulder movements. And, um, but if your neck is okay, we're just going to uh, drop our, our ear to our shoulder and we're just going to rest it here for a moment. So we're allowing time to do some work with our, with our neck. Um, so there's no strain. You shouldn't feel any pain. Um, in this kind of yoga, it's, it's a chair yoga, but there are yin elements to it of holding the pose. So you might feel a little bit of discomfort, but nothing that is going to cause you pain. All right, now we're going to go to the other side and we're just going to breathe here. Once again, we're going to try and keep our chest open and imagine delight. Imagine being delighted in something. In a sunny afternoon or imagining a sunny afternoon if we're in a gloomy part of the country at the moment. All right, we're going to come up and we'll go to the other side one more time. And then we're going to come up and drop our ear to the other side, good. And now we're going to drop our head forward, our chin to our chest. And in my case, it's a little bit of a double chin to my chest. And then I'm going to lift my head up, lift my chin up and look up. And then I'm going to drop my chin to my chest. And then I'm going to look up. Good. And I'm going to look to the right now over my right shoulder. And I'm going to look to the left over my left shoulder. And then to my right and my left. 
right, left, good. And now we're going to just drop our head to our, uh, to our, uh, our chin to our chest and then rotate it looking over our right shoulder and then looking up and then looking down. Now there shouldn't, if you feel any strain, we're going to move in the other direction, inhaling as we come up and exhaling as we move down and inhaling as we come up and exhaling as we go down. Now we're going to do this diagonal movement, which I find quite useful. So I'm, I'm tilting my head to the side and then I'm looking up. So my neck is a little bit on the diagonal to the ceiling. Then I'm going to, I'm going to pull the skin down from my neck while I'm looking up. And it gives a little bit of added tension. Now there shouldn't be any pain here. It should be just an opening. And now I'm gonna try the other side. So I'm gonna to move to the other side, tilt my head to the side and then look up a bit. So my neck is a bit on the diagonal and then pull the skin down. So you get a little bit more of a stretch here. This is also good for your eyes because we're moving our eyes around our eye socket. All right, and now we're going to come out. Good, and now we're just going to roll our shoulders one way and another way, and we're going to shake our hands out a bit and just shake our whole body. And if you can, you can lift up one leg and shake it and the other leg and shake it, and we can just give ourselves a good shimmy, <laughs> like we're doing that very old dance we did when we were children, some of us, <laughs> the shimmy. Okay, all right. Now we're going to work on our hands for a moment. So we're just going to press our palms into each other. And we're going to feel our the finger mounds here and the heel of our hand. We're going to feel a, a, as though this is a, a, the center of our palm is a suction cup. So it's kind of open. There's a, like an arch in our hand. We're pushing in and pushing into our hands, really pushing hard. This is a kind of isometric exercise, which is good for us. Good. And now we're going to drop our hands. We're going to push in. We, can't, we have to be a bit more gentle here because there's bony matter here, but we're going to push in here and we're going to flay our hands. I'm flapping my fingers this way to really give my wrists stretch and my fingers some stretching. Good. And now we're going to try the other way. You might feel that it's a bit crampy, in, in which case you can just shake your hands out. And then we're going to try the other side. We're going to flap our fingers in this way. Good. Now we're going to open and close our fingers. We're going to um, close our fingers in our thumb, our thumbs, and then we're going to flick them open, really stretching our fingers. And we're going to make a tight, tight, tight fist. And then we're going to flick them open, really stretching our fingers here, in and out. And we can inhale and then exhale, blow it out. Inhale and then exhale. Inhale. And then exhale. Good, wiggle our fingers. Very good, now we're going to pull our hands down, our fingers down, our thumbs down towards our wrist. And then we're going to pull our fingers down that way. You can be quite gentle with this, but the, the point is just to open your fingers up a bit. So those of us who have arthritic fingers, this is really useful to do. And then we can just wiggle our hands as though we're doing a doorknob. And here we're going to do the same thing. We're going to do this and this and this and this and this. Now, the other thing we can do, I'm going to try it with my shirt here. One of the things you can do is with a dishcloth. I just learned this. It's a very good idea. You take a dishcloth at one end and you just hold it. And then you run your fingers along it and move through the dishcloth like this. And it requires you to do a lot of manual manipulation so it's very good for your fingers good and now we're just going to shake our fingers out okay we're going to work on our elbows now make a fist turn our hands up and we're going to lift one hand up and then the other one arm and then the other good and now we're going to move our arms out and we're going to move our arms up this way and we can do it both at the same time. Superman, superwoman. <laughs> Fortunately, we don't have to be either one. And good. 
moving our elbows. And we're just going to make circles with our elbows. And we're going to make circles with our wrists one way and then the other way. All right, enough of that. Now, if you have bare feet, you can press your toes into the ground and lean forward a bit and give your feet. And you can also try and separate your toes out and push forward. So you're really arching your feet and pushing into your toes. So depending on your toes, if they're very, very painful, you don't have to do this or you can just do it a little bit. And if you do it every day, your toes will probably open out a bit. My toes have really um, separated a lot since I've been doing a lot of yoga. Good, so you can press in and then you can, you can stretch your heels out and you can point your toes, stretch your heels out, point your toes, show me those nails pink or purple or just plain ordinary flesh colored. Okay, push your heels out, toes, and now we're going to circle the ankles and circle the ankles the other way. Good. Okay, we're going to work with our knees now. We're just going to uh, lift uh, our foot up and just stretch one foot out. And then we're going to bring it back and then stretch that foot out again. Now, if you, if you can stand, you can stand beside your chair and do this, or you can just move your knees. Good, and we'll do the other knee. Good. Very good, okay. Now we're going to move, we're going to put, um, we're going to, I'm holding onto the side of the chair here, and I'm just going to lift both my knees up if I can. Good. Now I'm going to put my heels down on the ground. I'm just going to move my chair back a little bit so you can see me better. There. So I'm going to put my, I'm going to move to the middle of my chair. I'm putting my feet down on the ground. I'm sitting up straight. I feel that puppeteer string at the crown chakra, the tip top of my head. And I'm just going to walk my fingers down my legs. Now, depending on your mobility, you might find you want to just stop here. You could stop at your shin or you could go all the way down and touch your toe. And you're exhaling when you're doing this. And now we're going to inhale and we're going to just come up vertebrae by vertebrae until we're sitting tall. And then we're going to, um, we're going to uh, arch over our legs, touch our knees and our shins, and then our toes. And then we're going to come up one more time. Good. So we're, Exhaling as our chest is concave. And then we're inhaling to come up. Exhaling. Inhaling. Now, if you have difficulty lowering your head, you can just be arching your arms and then coming back. Sometimes people find it dizzying to lower their head, so below their uh, your torso. Okay, and then we're going to come up. Good. Now, uh, we're going to sit back again, and uh, we're going to do a little bit of twisting. Now, this is might be too much for you, so you have, there are lots of alternatives here. You can just cross your legs, your ankles if you like. Uh, you can cross, uh, you can cross your legs this way, or you can cross at the shin. Um, or you can lift your, uh, in this case, I'm lifting one foot up and I'm putting my leg in a figure four so that I have, um, I have a kind of right, a, a triangle here between my legs and I'm pressing out through my, through the toe mounds here, the, this part of my foot and through my heel. So I've got a nice arch in my foot. There's a real sense of this being a flexed foot, not a pointed foot. Good. And I'm just going to, Push gently out with my thigh so that I'm kind of lowering my leg down. So this is really opening my, my groin a little bit here. And it's good for your hip. So I'm just pushing out gently. And I'm just going to do this with my breath. So I'm, I'm inhaling and sitting up as I push out. And then I'm exhaling and coming back. And then I'm inhaling and pushing out. 
and then I'm exhaling. Inhaling and exhaling. Inhaling and exhaling. Inhaling and exhaling. Good. All right. So now we're just going to lower down if we can. Now, if it's too much, then um, you can cross your legs and do this, or you can cross your ankles and just go down a little bit. So I'm going to start with a straight back. And just with a straight back, I'm moving forward as far as I can. Might not be very far. And then I'm going to round over and come down as far as I can. Now, you want to make sure you don't lose your balance and fall off your chair. <laughs> so I'm just going to rest here for a moment. If you feel any pain in your lower back, then just come up and you can put, hold, you can rest on your on your legs. But this is a good um, opening here for your back. It gives you a lovely round curve and you're using a bit of gravity to uh, do some of the opening. And we can breathe here into our back body. So imagine that our ribs and our back can open up like an accordion. So we're inhaling, feeling our back ribs. It's as though they're opening up. And then we're exhaling again. So we're inhaling through our nose. And we're exhaling through our nose. Inhaling through our nose. Exhaling through our nose. And now we're going to come up again, rolling up. Okay, and we'll try the other side. So we're putting our, that foot on the ground. We might want to stamp our feet, shake our feet out, give ourselves a little shimmy here. And we'll try our other leg. So once again, you can cross your ankles. Um, and we're going to put our, our foot in a, um, in a figure four. Okay, now I have a gimpy knee here, so I have to be quite careful of my knee. So I only do it, if, if I feel some discomfort, I actually don't do very much of it. So this feels okay today, but um, if you have a gimpy knee and you feel you know, quite a bit of discomfort, then I would suggest not doing this. You could do just your crossed ankles. Okay, so once again, we're just going to um, use our hand to press down and Feel a little opening in the groin, inhaling, and then you can come back and just exhale. Inhale and exhale. Inhale and exhale. Inhale and exhale. Good. All right. And we're just going to, once again, we're going to fold over if we can. Exhaling as much as we can. Now this is good for your hamstring. If it's too much, then just roll back up. Inhaling, and then we're going to exhale again over top. And you can allow yourself just to uh, rest here. And then I'm going to roll up. And then I'm going to roll down. And rolling up. Good. Now we're going to cross, just allow that leg to cross over here. And we're going to do a twist. We're uh, moving my foot now to the center. And I'm pressing my foot into the ground. And I'm using this uh, upper thigh as uh, a way to establish a, a little bit more of a stretch here. So I'm moving around, I'm putting my hand on the side of the chair here, or you can put it behind, behind the chair. And I'm turning, I'm turning from the waist. So I'm turning, turning, turning from the waist. And your head is the last thing to turn while I'm pressing into this thigh. And I can feel a very good stretch here. So this is a spinal twist. And the spine moves in six different directions. So the, the twists are two of them. We've done forward and back, and we've done some, we'll do some more side, side bends. So here we go, we're twisting and we're holding. So when you want to come out, you can come out and go back into it. I, sometimes staying in these postures is a way to open up the fascia 
I've been told that it takes about 90 seconds for the fascia to be affected with these movements. So the fascia are the connective tissue where all of the nerves and things run through. Okay, and now we're going to come around. Good, we'll do that one more time. We don't, won't stay as long this time, but see if when uh, having let up, we, you can turn a little bit further. We're trying to keep both of our hips facing the front, our pelvis facing the front of the room, and then we'll come back and we'll do it one more time. So, okay, and then you come back. Now we'll put both our feet on the ground and we'll do that to the other side, the twist. We didn't do it the last time. So once again, I'm gonna lift my leg up and do figure four, then I'm gonna cross it over. Now, if this is too much for you, you can just cross your ankles. Um, so I'm crossing over and I'm sitting up. I've got my hand on my thigh and I'm either holding onto the side of the chair or you can put your hand over the back of the chair or uh, you just want to have um, some something to hold on to so that when you're twisting, you've got a way to twist from your waist again, all the way around your chest should be up and um, you're looking over your shoulder towards whatever, you know, towards the side or the back of the room. And here we can just stay here for a moment, a few breaths, I'm inhaling and my chest is open and I'm inhaling into my chest and then I'm exhaling. Inhale, exhale. Inhale, exhale. And if you like, you can exhale a little bit longer. So we can inhale and then exhale. Inhale and then exhale. All right, we're going to turn back to the front of the room and we can lift our leg up and put it down. Okay, good. All right, now what else do we need to do? We've done quite a few things. Okay, we'll do some side bends. So we're gonna lift our arms up and we're going to feel our shoulders, shoulder blades drop down the back of our, of our spine. And we're going to feel our chin is up, but not lift, too lifted up. And uh, once again, we feel that puppeteer pulling our neutral spine up towards the ceiling. And then we're going to drop one hand down and lift the other one up like an airplane. And then we're going to come back the other way. And here we go. This is a very fun thing for a puppy. <laughs> and you can actually arc one of your hands over the top if you like. And then we're going to go the other way. So this is a lovely side bend here. You might, if you if you find that it's difficult to balance here, you could hold onto the chair with one arm and go over that way. That's perfectly, you find an adaptation that works for you. You're your own best teacher, as they say. Good, all right. And we'll roll our shoulders out again, good. Okay, now we're going to do a little bit of balancing. Now, if you find it difficult to balance, then um, you can repeat any of those postures that we've been doing, any of those twists or those forward bends, or you can just sit quietly and you can lift one leg up and down and the other leg up and down. You could hold onto your chair and move forward if you're, if you're stable and lift your leg up or lift, try and lift both legs up if you can. Okay, otherwise we're going to do some, um, those of you who can uh, hold on to the chair and do some balancing exercises, that's what we're going to do. Now I am very, I am very, um, I'm, I'm fairly poor at balancing, I have to confess. Uh, so this I really have to work on and as we age, it, it can be a bit of a problem. I'm just going to move the camera up a little bit here. There we go, okay. So I'm just uh, on the, I'm on one side of the chair and I'm just going to um, move my leg forward and then move it back, move it forward and move it back, move it forward and move it back. And then I'm going to lift it up. I'm either going to, I'm going to move the leg out and in, out and in. So here we're just opening 
this this leg uh, towards the side, the knee towards the side of the room, and bring it back. And now I'm going to plant that on the either on the shin, on the ankle. You could do it on the knee. Uh, used to in yoga, they used to say that unless you have a really bad knee issue, you can put your foot on your knee. It's not going to move sideways. It's not built like that. Um, or you can, you know, you can go full tree pose up here um, and press your foot into your thigh and press your thigh into your foot. So wherever it is, you want to move, have, move your leg towards your foot. So you're kind of holding it. So I'm going to, just going to leave it right here. Good. And now you can, um, you can use a wall as well as a, a, a chair. And I'm just going to balance here. So I'm, you know, you can, the traditional pose is this, um, but you don't have to do that. You can hold on to something and just let it go so that you have a moment of balance. Now, if your balance, if you feel you're going to fall over, then don't do this because you don't want to fall over at home on your own. <laughs> so just, uh, you could, you can really just hold on tight to something. Um, but, um, you can just hold onto a wall or your chair and balance when you can. Good. Very good. All right. We're going to bring that leg down. We'll bring it forward first and then we'll bring it down. And then we'll just find our, find our, our way again. You might feel a little imbalance here. So that's another thing to it, to just sense your body. How is it that your body feels? Your your upper body should be a little bit open because we've done a lot of shoulder work and and uh, spinal movement, but your lower body might not feel quite quite uh, balanced. So I'm going to move over to the other side of the chair, and I'm going to hold on to it here, and then I'm going to just swing my leg forward and swing it back, swing it forward, and swing it back, swing it forward, back, forward back and now I'm going to just lift it up uh, well, sorry I'm going to turn it out and bring it back turn it out and bring it back your hips should be facing the front and I'm just moving from my hip this is a good uh, kind of greasing your, your hip joint a bit okay good and now I'm going to just hold on to the foot and place it or I can you could just place it on your ankle your shin your knee or your upper leg, whatever is comfortable for you, your inner thigh. So once again, I'm pressing this leg towards the foot so that there's some uh, real power in, in, and it allows us when we press our foot, no matter where it is, and when we press our leg towards our foot, we do feel a bit of a centering and we're feeling that we're moving upright. We're not uh, really going like this. We're not moving like that. We feel like we're kind of centered here. Oops. Except I'm falling over. Okay, good. Now, um, so I'm going to put my foot up here. You put your foot where you like. And I'm going to try that balance. Letting go. Letting go. Letting go. And holding on. So, and all the time we're breathing here, we feel our chest, our collarbone lifting up. And we feel really our breath. We, once again, we can inhale all the way to our deep belly, to our side ribs, to our upper chest. And then we can exhale from the top down, inhaling from the bottom up and exhaling from the top down. Inhaling and exhaling. Inhaling and exhaling. Good. Now I'm going to just move my leg in and I'm going to drop it down. I'm going to wiggle my hips a bit just to get them um, loose again. I'm going to do a little bit of a hula hoop movement here, holding onto the chair if need be. And good. And then the other way. Good. Now, I, I think I'll, we'll just do a few side bends over here. So we'll lift our arm up and we can bend over the chair. So if you're sitting, you can do some more, a few more side bends. 
there we go. And then we can come up and then another side bend here and then coming up. Good. All right, we'll do a couple of side bends to the other side. Good. Now, there, I'm going to come back to sit on the chair. We can do other yoga postures. So you decide whether this is beyond you or not. But you can do a seated, some seated postures that are like warrior two. So we can bring our, uh, in this case, it's my right leg out. I'm, uh, my foot is facing the side wall. And uh, my knee is at 90 degrees. And this leg, I am stretching out. And I'm sliding back so that my, my thigh is on the chair and my back leg is moving in. So I've got my ankle, uh, my, my toe on the, my feet on the, my back feet on the diagonal um, and my front feet facing forward. So that this is a kind of variation, a seated variation on warrior two. Now, Depending on the height of your chair, you might want a, a block underneath your front foot. Um, I'm pressing, I'm pressing into the chair here, into my foot, my front foot. And I'm pressing my thigh back and I'm rotating both thighs out so that I feel a real sense of opening in my groin. And I can lift my hands up if it's convenient and you're not going to fall over. Good. And we can just really feel the energy moving out, shooting out our fingers like firecrackers as we press into our foot, press our, we're pressing, we're rotating our thighs around and we're pressing our, uh, our thigh back to uh, open up your knee. Now, if you have any pain in your knee, don't do this, um, but we will just go on. You can go back to any of the other postures we were doing earlier. Okay, so, and now we're going to do um, an extended side angle. So uh, we're just shifting here. I'm, I'm holding, I can put my hand in my hip crease here and I can feel myself shift so that my waist is straight here and I am shifting towards that bent knee. And then I'm dropping my forearm to my thigh. And if you like, you can lift your arm up and over. Now this is fairly advanced for many chair yoga people, but it is something you can do on a chair. So I thought I would show you. And once again, when you're doing this, you're inhaling and exhaling and really feeling the opening in your chest. You can feel your chest open up to the sky. Good. And you're inhaling your belly button and you're feeling both waist, the sides of your waist extend. Good, and now we're going to drop that top arm down, slide it down the leg, and we'll do a little bit of a peaceful warrior. So we're going to arc back this way towards the other side. Good, very good. Now we can just, to get out of this, we just put our hands on our chair and slide back and shimmy our feet forward so that they are facing the front. Good. Well, we survived that. Warrior two, side, extended side angle pose, and gentle warrior. Okay, we'll try the other side. So we're going to move, um, we'll, um, you can actually do it a number of different ways. Let's try it this way. So we can start actually facing this way because then our, this leg's right. And we're going to slide back so that our foot is directly below our knee. And we're going to, rotate this leg out behind us and make sure that our toes are facing, I better move my chair forward a bit. Make sure that my, my heel is, my toes are on the diagonal in the back and my toes in the front are facing the front. So once again, we're pressing into our foot in the floor. You can lift your toes up and really feel yourself pressing into the floor. And I'm resting on my thigh here. And I'm pressing this knee back to 
and this thigh back in order to straighten my knee. And I'm rotating around here. Good. So I've rotated from this side right to the front. So we're, of course, a bit on the diagonal, but because our legs are in this odd position. But this is a very interesting variation on the warrior pose. So we're going to lift our arms up. And we're just going to stay here for a moment. You can actually lift your arms above your head if you like. And you could clasp your hands and stretch your fingers up above your head if you like. This is a, just a variation. Once again, and you're keeping that, you're pulling in your belly, pulling in your belly button towards your spine. And now we're going to open our hands out. We're going to push our hands out. Our, our palms out and now we can just raise our hands like this and we can look towards our front front uh, fingers good so we're holding the pose which is a beautiful thing to do in yoga because you really feel the complexity of the pose the sweetness of it and the firmness and the discipline. Okay. Now this time we're going to uh, stretch out. Once again, we can put our hand on our hip crease. We're going to stretch out our arm straight out and bend the knee and drop our forearm down to our thigh. Once again, we feel our body, our chest opening to the to the to the ceiling if we can. And we're going to just lift our arm up and over so that there, we're on the diagonal between our fingertips, our upper fingertips, and the back edge of our foot, which we're pressing into the ground. We're pressing both our feet into the ground. We're feeling our, our ribs lower here. There's a tendency to let your ribs come up, so you want to lower your ribs, and you want to extend both sides of your waist. So that's the pose, the ideal pose. Of course, our bodies are finicky, and, and they do the pose, the way they do the pose. We are our own best teachers and we know our bodies best. Okay, now we're going to come up and we're going to slide that arm down our back leg and open up, open our upper arm up and arc it over our body. This is called gentle warrior and we can look up. And now we're going to open our arm up and we can go back into that pose very easily. We could do a little bit of a flow here, going back and forth, if you like. This is quite a lovely movement. And our asanas are really intended to be preparation for meditation. So they are breathing in, Breathing in, exhaling, breathing in, exhaling, breathing in, exhaling, breathing in, exhaling. Okay, so that's enough of that. So I think we'll scoot back to the other side briefly and do that movement. We didn't only did it on one side and it's a very opening movement. Now, once again, if this is too much for you, you can, in fact, just do um, these side movements that will give you a similar stretch. Okay, let's just do this briefly on this side. So once again, we're sliding our thigh, our foot's below us, the back foot, the, the foot is uh, on the diagonal towards the front of the mat and the heel is down. We're pressing into the outer edge of our back foot and we're lifting our arms up. We are cutting in here, moving forward, dropping our arm and stretching up. Good, and we're looking up here. And then we're going to um, move back, drop our, slide our arm down. The other arm arches over. We're going to go back onto the diagonal of the extended side angle. And then we're going to go back this way. Good. 
So we are inhaling as we move into this. And then we're exhaling and inhaling as our chest is extended up like this. Okay. Inhaling, sliding down, exhaling, inhale, curving up, exhaling, inhaling as we open up, and then sliding down, and exhaling. Good, all right. So now that's enough, probably enough of that. And we're going to slide our feet in and we're just going to take a bit of a rest. We can stamp our feet, we can wiggle our toes and our ankles and our wrists and do this kind of clownish movement. A lot of these movements are very playful and I think this is such a good thing for us to do as adults, as older adults especially, is to play good. All right, so we're going to come and do some of our prep preparations for, um, for our final relaxation. So I'm going to move on uh, towards the front of the um, front of the, uh, the chair so that I'm sitting in the middle. I can hold on here so I'm, I'm really stable. Um, you need to you, you should put your chair on a you know if you put it on broad loom, thick broad loom or you put it on a rubber mat or something so it doesn't move around. That's probably the best thing to do. And I'm just going to open my legs out a bit here. And I'm just going to do a little bit of windshield wiper here because the opening of the of the warrior and side angle and gentle warrior in the hips does some uh, work in our hips. So this gives it a little bit of a a little bit of a rotation in our hips that's quite liberating. Good. All right. Good. Now there's one part of our body we haven't really worked on. And this I think is a very joyful posture and it's called lion. And we're just going to put our hands on our knees and we're going to art, just um, move our flat back forward. And we're going to open our eyes and our mouth, stick at our tongue and exhale assertively. So here we go. And I like to cross my eyes. It's a, like a marvelous Maori face. which was intended to scare the enemy. <laughs> so I hope you're suitably scared. All right. Now we can move back onto our chair and feel ourselves settling in. Um, you might want to, uh, if you're cold, you might have a blanket at hand. You could put it on your, on your lap or over your shoulders. Uh, and we're going to do some uh, relaxation. Um, I want us to uh, do a bit of a body scan here. And I want us to sense our body and how it felt at the beginning of the class and um, take a little bit of an inventory about how it feels now. You can move your shoulders back. How are your shoulders feeling now? And you can move them forward. You can move your head from side to side dropping your ears to your shoulders gently. You can feel your feet on the floor and you can flap them a little bit and wiggle your toes and you can lift them up and you can rotate your knees and then you can just drop them to the ground. You can tense your thighs and your buttocks, your glutes, and then you can let them go. You can uh, tense your hands around your, make a fist with your hand. You can rotate your wrists. You can extend your arms and rotate and, and uh, move your arms up and down, moving your elbows 
And then you can just drop your hands down to the side and shake them out, shaking out any excess energy. Good. You can feel the skin on your scalp let go. It's an odd concept, but just feel the skin on your forehead letting go to the sides of your eyes. You can feel the skin on your cheekbones. You can feel your belly relaxing, your chest. You can feel your lips parting slightly, your tongue relaxing into your lower jaw. And you can sense a deep relaxation in your body. And you're just inhaling and exhaling like we did at the beginning of class. Inhaling and exhaling. Inhaling and exhaling. And one of the things that yoga does is it connects up our body and our mind and our heart. So while you're just sitting there resting, your palms can be face up if you like on your thighs or, or they can, they can uh, be folded over your thighs. You're inhaling and exhaling. And I'm just going to read a beautiful poem that's intended just to float over your consciousness. So this is a heart opening poem by Naomi, Naomi Shihab, Shihab Nye. It's called Kindness. Before you know what kindness really is, you must lose things. Feel the future dissolve in a moment, like salt in a weakened broth. What you held in your hand, what you counted and carefully saved, all this must go so you know how desolate the landscape can be between the regions of kindness. How you ride and ride thinking the bus will never stop. The passengers eating maize and chicken will stare out the window forever. Before you know kindness as the deepest thing inside, you must know sorrow as the other deepest thing. You must wake up with sorrow. You must speak to it till your voice catches the thread of all sorrows and you see the size of the cloth. Then it is only kindness that makes sense anymore. Only kindness that ties your shoes and sends you out into the day to gaze at bread. Only kindness that raises its head from the crowd of the world to say, it is I you have been looking for. And then goes with you everywhere. It is kindness, it says. It is I you have been looking for and then goes with you everywhere like a shadow or a friend. So this is sympathetic joy, kindness, it means placing someone else's happiness before your own by understanding the world through their eyes and then understanding and encouraging their prosperity. This radiant joy dissolves barriers between ourselves and others. So with those thoughts in mind, I'll just invite you to breathe deeply, inhaling, and exhaling, inhaling, and exhaling, inhaling, and exhaling.
I'll just leave you in silence for a moment. Your eyes closed. Inhaling and exhaling. And with the next exhalation, you can wiggle your toes and wiggle your fingers. You can feel your breath moving through your body to your extremities, waking them up. You can drop your hands to the side of your chair and you can gently shake your arms gently shake your legs you can turn to one side and then turn to the other side you can lift your shoulders up and back and forward and hold on to your put your hands on your knee and turn your the edges of your lips up into a smile, opening your eyes, greeting the day again, preparing for your sleep or preparing for a new day where you will find joy in moments, perhaps minutes, perhaps the day. Thank you for joining me for this chair yoga class. I hope that it tended to you, that it developed some self-care. You can lift your hands up and hold onto your shoulders and embrace yourself, massaging your shoulder a bit with one arm on top, and then you can change arms and embrace yourself again, give yourself a little self-care and tenderness and kindness, and then we can simply smile at each other in honor. I honor the teacher in you, and the student in me honors the student in you. And I send the merit of this practice, which is a Buddhist practice, out into the world to all of the teachers who have tended me over the course of my life and to all of the teachers in you I meet on this day. Thank you for joining me. And I look forward to, um, to meeting you again. So I'm going to turn off the recording and stay on if you feel like chatting. Um, and you can contact me, of course, if you have any questions. <laughs>